Hey, welcome to another episode of the Talent Talk Show. Um, I'm your host, Chaz Becker. Super excited to be talking with Jamie Atkins about communication. It's, I think, his number one um, theme, and it's number three for me. So we're going to be talking up a storm today. I'm really excited to dive into this theme. It's probably one of my favorite themes. And so let me just give you a quick Gallup definition of communication. It says people exceptionally talented in the communication theme generally find it easy to put their thoughts into words. They are good conversationalists and presenters. Um, and so Jamie, how, how we met is he runs one of the best strengths Instagram accounts out there. It's called the underscore strengths underscore coach. And so we connected on Instagram. I love his content and material. And so I'll turn it over to Jamie to introduce himself a little bit more. I, I, I don't know how to take that phrase. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's really kind of you. But um, yeah, so I, I do have a couple of, of accounts that are out there at the moment. They're all very, it's all quite new and it's all quite fresh. Uh, a, a bit of background to me, uh, as you've already heard, my name's Jamie. I'm, I'm living over in the UK, so I, I'm around about. Everybody seems to work out where you are in the UK by how far you are from London. So <laughs> that, that's my description. I'm about half an hour from London, an hour from London. Right. Um, it doesn't matter direction. No one wants to know that. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, bit, a bit of background about me. Uh, I... Um, I used to be a teacher for 10 years, working with what we call primary education over here, so five-year-olds up until 11. And over the last uh, two years, I've moved away from, from the education sector, well, moved away from early education and actually are working with the early years sector now, so with nurseries, um, training staff, and uh, lots, I say training, lots of kind of coaching, lots of lots of support, lots of facilitation is the word I tend to prefer. Um so that's that's a bit about my uh, my work direction, and and then on a personal level, uh, because I don't get very far in any conversation before they come up. But uh, uh, my wife had twins about fourteen month fourteen fifteen months ago. So um, any exhaustion you spot underneath my eyes, <laughs> I'm holding them wholly accountable. We'll blame them. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and and you can tell just how much I actually. Um, uh, are on top of my general day-to-day -day life when you notice as you watch this that that clock up there in the corner the batteries went weak ago and it's still <laughs> around to change them. so when the time doesn't change yeah um, yeah that just shows you what life with twins is like <laughs> totally one day they'll be one old, day one, they'll be old enough to change <laughs> change the batteries for you <laughs> <laughs> when i need to teach them time it might be a good idea to, uh, to get yeah get it get it started that's hilarious <laughs> well, well you probably experienced a little bit of our communication right there. We are um, verbal people, but Jamie, I'd love to hear what your favorite part about having communication is. Yeah, um, you're, you're right. Two communicators together is a, it's a powerful but sometimes <laughs> dangerous conversation to, to listen into. So one of my intentions today is to try and be concise in my stories. But um, I think that for me, what communication is, I really am inspired, hence, Chaz, what, what drew me to yourself in the first place. And I've actually watched um, a couple of the, the YouTube uh, recordings that you've done so far. But I'm really inspired by great communicators. And I, I am constantly listening to people that communicate effectively and picking up on that and taking little bits of it and thinking, what is it that makes them effective? And I want to do that. I, I think I, I often can bring clarity to people. So I've, I've been told multiple times that actually someone might explain to me all their thoughts and I can help kind of bring some, some clarity, bring yes. it all together, pull it together to shape. Actually, you've just told me this over 15 minutes and I can summarize it in a sentence that, that, that would probably be what I tend to do. I think that I uh, share words and pictures quite well. And I'm having been a teacher and now teaching in the early years, I'm so, um, I'm so focused on making sure that people are engaged uh, and I know what it's like when someone is loading content onto me <laughs> as opposed to it involving me in the process. So, so I'm, I'm quite conscious about that and uh, yeah, I could easily jump into other themes that I've got and how they mix together, but, it, but that, that would probably summarize part of what I love about communication. 
Yeah, yeah. I totally resonate with that. That was happening yesterday. I was helping a, a colleague with some content that he was creating. And so he was like, it was like questions that he was trying to generate. And so he's like working around. I was like, so what if we said this? And he's like, he's like, yes. And it's like just that ability to hear someone else's ideas mm -hmm. and then like really craft it in a way that's like clear and understandable. I'm like, yeah, okay. I definitely can track with that. Um, and I, I tell you what I've also another another strength that I've been drawn to and I've got colleagues who have higher levels of this and I used to think it was communication is analytical um, because actually people with analytical really select language carefully and they mm -hmm. know what the exact they know the precise word that fits that context now for me as a communicator I'm constant you'll hear me today go to say something and then go and that's probably not <laughs> words I do that all the time totally. but I've got colleagues with analytical who some, they can just pull that word out. And I love that. Yeah. So another thing that is for me, and I want to hear if it's true for you as well, is the process of verbally, like verbally processing things. And so it's like you have an idea, but it doesn't really became, become formalized and like understood yeah. even in your own psyche until you say it out loud. Um, do, you, do you experience that at all with, because of the yeah. strength? Without a doubt. And, and I, I try to say every time, I try to caveat by saying I'm thinking out loud. Um, and, and the reason I tend to do that is because people do, might take what you're saying as gospel and that this is absolutely the, the finite truth and this is what you believe in. I, I, I realised it even recently with things like values. My values can be shaped by conversations I'm having um, and the things I believe in. So me having a good conversation i'm constantly make i'm learning as well i've got learners number uh, seven strength so when i hear somebody else i'm forming my ideas and I'm, I'm testing them out and i'm seeing how they land and seeing the reactions i get back um so absolutely everything i do is thinking out loud and, and i find it quite a challenge to to not do it with everybody <laughs> yes yes for sure well, I think you've already shared some things of like how it shows up in your life, but in terms of your work, I'd love to hear more about like how communication shows up in your life, how you use it on a regular basis. Yeah, I think, um, I think for me, communication, communication is an influencing um, strength, uh, sits in the influencing domain. So it's important for me to think about who the different audiences are. Um, and I will always dip into other themes if you don't mind, Chas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I've also had empathy. So I often consider other people's perspective and empathy is quite a high theme for me as well. So um, when I'm communicating, I'm already thinking about who are my audience and, and what is it that resonates and what works well. With, uh, on a personal level, more recently, having done the Gallup Accredited Coaching course, I actually looked into, and, and as you mentioned, the, the Strengths Coach um, Instagram page, uh, a Facebook page to go alongside it, and LinkedIn too. And I actually spent some good time. I'm, I'm not a big fan of Instagram initially, which I don't know if I'm allowed to admit that, given that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the first thing we promoted today. And, but I, I actually tried to work out in a communication perspective, what do we use these for? Because there is so many social media tools out there that you could easily be flooded and, and what, what are you drawn to and why do people reach them? And so I, I, I wrote a blog post, which was my kind of relationship with different social medias, um, which again, you, could, you can find on a SOAR page I've got. But if you follow my name, Jamie Atkins on LinkedIn, um, there's, there's links in previous posts I've done about that. Um, and I was just trying to break down why do I use things? And, and so Instagram for me is very much that visual cue. Um, Facebook for me was always the kind of that personal connection. Uh, but actually Facebook seems to be the most commonly used by lots of people. Um, and there seems to be some good communities with the Gallup, uh, with people that are invested in strengths out there. Uh, LinkedIn is very much for me that kind of professional and it's the space to kind of blog as well. So, so, and, and I'm the roundabout way to about talking about communication. What, what I've tried to work out is what do I want to post? in these places and what do i want the impact to be and so as i said on on linkedin i write blog posts and actually they're the ones that i've got the best reaction from now i am um, i've never wrote blog posts in the slightest i'm not a writer i wouldn't class myself as a writer i used to get given those tasks often in jobs which i hate it when people give me this <laughs> yeah 
Um, oh, could you read through this because you'll know the right words or you'll be able to correct or spot the grammatical errors or... And I, <laughs> you're like no no i can't That's i really <laughs> really don't want to do that job don't give it to me please I'm, I'm, I'm more than capable of doing it and i i um i can spot how it will land with an audience i'm not particularly energized by it That's but true. having write, written blog post recently is something that gives me so much energy it, it i think um what i've realized about my communication style is in terms of the way we all use social media, when, when I grew up and I was young and you put on Facebook, occasionally these things come up to remind you that five years ago or maybe longer, yeah. 12 <laughs> years ago, you posted that you were bored. <laughs> and, you, and I look back and I think, well, I posted that for everybody to see. And that's yeah. the type of content I was putting out. Um, but actually, I've, I've realized what builds connection, which is really important to me, is honesty um being really open about what are my experiences of life being able to which is sometimes i think maybe described as a non-male trait and I'm, I'm, i know i'm generalizing when i say this but um the fact that we can be honest about things that might be to do with our mental health or might be to do with the things that impact us in our life and actually for me recently writing blog posts and through the odd things that I've posted in the past, I get a really big connection with people when I write those. Um, and, and, and really what interests me is if I say about, I'm good at this, I do this really well, don't get, you don't get a lot. You don't get a lot of people wanting to respond with that. What people seem to resonate with is the challenges. So absolutely. more, more recently in blog posts, the types of things that I've wrote about that, that have connected are the past in a way of there was someone I was really close to when I grew up. Um, I've spoke a bit about my mental health, about losing losing a role recently. My my twins were born in neonatal care and were born early, and there were challenges. So, um, and <laughs> I'm I'm not saying if you go and read my blog post, they're going to bring you down because <laughs> I have positivity as a theme, and, and I try and look as a positive outlook yeah, on them. Yeah. And, <laughs> but for me, that's it's been really interesting exploring my communication in that way. It's something I've enjoyed. Yeah, that's cool. Just I love that that thoughtfulness behind like, well, how, like, how am I influencing people in these different domains and, or what kind of, like, how do I want to influence these people in different domains? And then like thinking through how do I craft that message then to hit people where they're at and, you know, meet them in the place that does actually influence them towards, you know, a better life and um, using their strengths and, you know, all the things that you're, you're talking about on um, the different platforms right now, which I think has, has been really great. I've been encouraged by some of the stuff I've read by you. So for sure. um, yeah. So you shared a little bit about kind of, kind of what you're putting out as content wise, but then in terms of, so you were at, like training people and I know you're in a job transition now. Um, but when you were, let's, let's go back even to when you were teaching, um, elementary school and maybe you didn't have know as much about your communication, but how do you look back and like see your communication at work back when you were a teacher? Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. You, um, I also have woo and I think that the, the, these two themes often come up together. You, you, mm -hmm. Winning, winning others over for the, those that are newer to strengths. But there would, there would, again, I talk about different audiences. There are different audiences when you work in a school. So your audiences are your class, your children. Um, they are the parents of those children. They are your team, your staff that you work alongside. I was a school governor, so they're, they're, they're different groups. And so my communication style would probably differ, and, differ, and particularly when played alongside Wu, in trying to win them around in the way that is best. Um, and that is most effective to them. I think it's become more refined over time that I've learned how to be a good... I think when that communication isn't well refined, people talk non-stop um, and they dominate and they don't give other people space. And I've seen it happen quite a lot with communication and I, I have no doubt that I've been there and I may even be doing that now, so apologies. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and I'm not used to actually being uh, on this side of the fence because I, what I've realised where I, I aim my communication better now 
is to be a good listener. The best communicators are, are fantastic listeners. Chaz, you demonstrate that well in the oh, thank you. Um, in, in, in everything that you do. So whether that's the, the response, so the way you respond to me, you've heard what I've just said and you're not already on the train of thought of what's coming next. Um, your body language, those, those kind of things. So I, I think there are lots of things that play into your communication style. One of the back being a, a teacher you you are aware you, they do, <laughs> children are brutally honest if you've lost them they will show you they will turn around <laughs> they will be they'll, be gone. they'll be gone um, so I, it, it, it was a i would maybe describe as um a performance-based role uh, there, there's there were moments where you would have to use intonation you would have to jump on a table you would have to just do something completely blown out of the ordinary which actually isn't verbal communication is that non-verbal mm -hmm. but that it would just draw their attention back um and as we know communication is influencing so I'm, I'm, I'm constantly looking at the whole audience and how effective is this um in my communication style working with adults is a different kettle of fish, a real different. Uh, does that, does that? <laughs> I, I don't know if I know that one, but that might not be, just a, that might be a US UK thing or okay. it might just be me. So I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I should, yeah, don't, don't just jump into the, the sayings. Okay. Uh, it, it, it is very different working with uh, adults. I, I have to admit that I initially anticipated you forget that everybody has vulnerabilities and you see the vulnerability so much more with adults than you do children because children are unfiltered so often and they, they become uh, more aware as they grow. But by the time you reach a group of adults, a big part of your communication is saying the things that people are thinking. Um, and that, that does involve some of my other themes, but I have to pick up on the, look, I know not everybody likes it when they come to a training session. I know for some of you, the idea that I might ask you to respond in front of the whole group, that's not going to be ideal for you. So I am using Woo. I'm constantly thinking, how am I, gonna, how am I going to give you the opportunity to communicate in this session in a way that makes you feel comfortable? So I think, I think that's probably how it's uh, changed, refined, and, and continued to be used through, through my roles. Yeah. I love your um, your conversation around like the nonverbals, like because communication it, it seems so verbal, and it is it is extremely verbal. But uh, it, it made me remind me of one time. It was probably the first time I like gave a group presentation. So we would have these weekly um, meetings with about 150 students that would come to it, and we'd have like a TED Talk type thing. And so it was the first time that I was doing one for our students and we get done next day staff meeting and we were kind of critiquing the talks. We would do this every Friday after the talk on Thursday and someone just like encouraged my like nonverbals like that is like I got big when I was like when it was nice. special like I got smaller and my tone changed when when things happened and that was just interesting I was like oh they're like how did you know to do that <laughs> that was the question I was asking I was like uh what do you mean how did I know like I just did it like, was it just was it just instinctive it was just instinctive like it was yeah. just in me like why would I not change my inflection why would I not change my body language like I'm I could sense I was losing them and so so you know? that, that's what really interests me because it's, it's almost like an intuition. I've, I've, you just get the sense of the room and think, I've got to do something different here. And there's this communication is quite fast thinking, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, and I imagine you're fastly, you're fastly quickly picking up on, hang on, I need to do something different. Totally. And, yeah. and it's like, even even in the sense of like, I was, I'm, I'm high, like I would I, high and low is kind of how I like to describe it. And so I've been high for a bit. I've been getting people excited, but now I want to say something important or like, I want to yeah. bring it down. And it's like, we're here, but this is important. Right. And you, like, you just like, and, and that's just intuitive. I think for a lot of people with communication, because they can just, there's this sense of, 
we're not just good with words. We're good at communicating a message to people. And that's why it's an influencing theme. We're the, the, the natural talent of that is that influence of like bringing other people into like seeing the world as you see it um, and communicating that in a way that they're on, on board as well. Um, and so even as you were sharing with the kids and like jumping on the table or whatever, it's like you're bringing them back in because like you know that the message is important and you know that there's this, the, the vastness of communication needs to be used all together and not just our words. Um, and so and that's something. Yeah, absolutely. I, and then int- it, what interests me, Chaz, is that, uh, do you think that you've picked that up? There is a naturalness to it, uh, mm-hmm. but do you think there are great communicators who you can visualize straight away that you think, ah, oh, they do that really well. They do that really well. And, and there's, there's elements of, but I, I ask that because, for example, I love comedians. I love comedy. They are brilliant communicators, and and the I don't best. like you should. If you want to be a presenter, watch stand up comedy. Like yeah, they're the best. But yeah, continue, continue. No, 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 I just wondered. Are there as soon as you think about that kind of intonation, the 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 different volumes, the different size in your body? Do you have people you're drawn to in your mind that you think actually I reckon I may, might have picked a bit up from them or them? Um, so I would say the big, like, so the first like context that I would learn to like communicate to other people was football. Um, and so like football coaches motivating their team. Like, I think a lot of people would like Chaz is a football coach, just motivating his team, you know, like that's, that's my style. Um, but then people that I started to study as I got older was like Dr. Martin Luther King. I think one of the greatest orators of all time um and then i have a handful of like american pastors who it's like man those guys give messages every week on different topics and have to keep you know sometimes some boring people (laughs) engaged Mm -hmm. um on on a sunday morning and so like there there's some that are just brilliant communicators that i've learned a lot from um over my time so yeah like as you watch you're like you you see like oh I na- I naturally do that how do I get better at that um, mm-hmm. over time and so definitely there's watching other people communicate is a huge part of getting better and I think that's true for anyone who is in a position where they need to communicate it's like well you need to study other people who do it well and, and it's interesting is that people lean into different things so there, there'll be reasons that you'll be drawn to watch someone or learn from someone for me i just get a real buzz and energy from hearing it i just there'll just be little snippets of things i'm like love that take i'm, mm-hmm. I'm borrowing that I'm taking that sure well we've we've dove into some um theme dynamics so far and i know you we've talked a little bit about woo and empathy um and i think those two, I see just a natural connection between like empathy and like being able to communicate in a way that connects to how people are feeling or experiencing the world. And then woo is this idea of like, I can judge where someone's at and like want to like that, just the double influencer of like winning them over through, through our words. Um, But I'm really interested to think through communication connected to your other two top um, strengths, which is developer and strategic. Um, And yeah, I'd love to just hear what you have in terms of like how you see communication connect to developer and then also strategic. From a coach perspective, what I, I, I always want to help people move forward. I am, I love doing it. It doesn't matter who they are during some of this kind of the times over here during the pandemic and, and, uh, not going out I offered to help different communities that was a part of um, and when I say a part of I lead some forest school training I used to lead I don't know how well that that term is used over um, over your side can you explain but, uh, that a little bit because so, okay uh, essentially okay. forest school is um, it's a return to what we we all were doing if we went back 20 30 plus years but basically getting the children outdoors more and it's, it's very much a philosophy about uh, gotcha. outdoors outdoor based education but then there are facebook groups of community for school um teachers who 
quite often are independent and uh, are looking for creating their own businesses and setting up their own space. And, what, and so I just reached out and said, look, does anyone want coaching free of charge? An opportunity for me to, of course, there's benefits to me too, including the fact I like meeting new people. But ultimately, I absolutely love supporting someone to move forward. And I shouldn't admit this because this isn't a great financial model and there'll be people uh, laughing at me about to say this, but I'm just not driven. I've never been money motivated and, and a lot of people would develop it on. Um, and of course that's based on your other teams too. Um, but for me, I, I just want to help someone move forward and, and, and it's about hearing them first. It's about hearing where they are, where their challenges are, where they want to get to and understanding them. So that there is a lot of listening in my communication style there to understand what it is they need and how I can, what my communication I think is particularly good at in coaching is, is asking the right question um, and just, just letting it sit, resonate and ask the question that challenges them to think in a different way, which, which in an ideal world, any great coach should do, should encourage you to think differently. Oh. Um, from a from a strategic perspective, I like I love being involved in projects right from the beginning. But what the greatest value I bring is is being able to get people to spot the audiences very early on. Of okay, we're going to go about this, but how's that going to support X, Y, or Z? How are we going to communicate that to that person? How is that person going to buy into what we're suggesting we do? Um, and and I, I know there's a whole string of themes in what I've described there because my empathy means I pick up on these audiences. I've got a bit of includer, so I'm I'm quite aware um, of who might be missing. But but ultimately, I know we want to get from here to here. And for us to go along that path, how do we communicate the message all the way along? Because I'm not willing to jump in and try and engage somebody if our plan isn't coherent. Um, and if it's not really clear and really obvious and I can't articulate it easily to somebody, I'm not willing to bring them in yet. We need to yeah. get that bit refined. So I think I think that's probably a relation to developer and strategic and and Chaz, if you don't mind me leaning into my number six strength, because yeah, I think go uh, ahead. <laughs> positivity is my number six strength. And I think over time, uh, I'm sure this one may end up swapping into my top five. <laughs> over, I know there'll be very little movement, but it could do. But something I've done during this, uh, this time, which I've been so energised by, and uh, I'd really recommend to anybody who has communication, is uh, via LinkedIn, I was made redundant, looking for a new post, and... Um, and actually use LinkedIn to write recommendations. Uh, on someone's post, you can leave a recommendation much like when you're going for a new role and you need somebody to kind of verify what you've done in the past. Mm -hmm. And I have, every time I've sat down to do some work recently, I've sat and wrote about five recommendations in the space of about 10, 15 minutes. I just off the top of my head, anything I think about that person, quite hopefully individualized to them. I get such a kick out of it. Um, I'm so energized by giving people positive feedback about what they're good and great at. Are there other benefits? Yeah, potentially, because someone may see that I'm writing recommendations. Someone may choose to write one back. Someone may remember me because I chose to give them that positive feedback. Um, even when I, I did something similar when I left the last school I worked at, I worked alongside 20 plus colleagues. I wrote all of them a card, um, individual card, full page written. <laughs> personalized to them because and i did it off the cuff i mean it took time to write it but yeah. um i just the flow of the words that come out just come to me quite <laughs> ironic that i'm stalling over them but they come yeah. to me quite <laughs> <laughs> yeah just that i was like once the once the dams broke it's just here it comes like it just flows yeah. and keeps going that's I wish I had that in writing. Like that is not my writing style because I get, I think because okay. I get so far ahead that I then lose track of what I, I'm like actually writing. But when I'm speaking, I can like keep up with that flow and just, it just keeps coming. And Chaz, is that based on another theme that you've got that you're already a couple of steps ahead? Um, that's a good question. So I'm 
probably some like maximizer adaptability or so I have maximizer at two adaptability at five. Um, and so that, that adaptability piece is probably a huge, huge role. Cause I can just if, keep moving it. I don't know. So um, it's, it's a fast paced theme, isn't it? Adaptability. Yeah. And, and communication too. So those that's fast paced thoughts on, mm-hmm verbal and 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 words and everything and then adaptability is fast paced to the situation and how it's changing and flowing and so those together it's like i don't need much time to to think about what i have to say i just have to start doing it and it'll it'll come guys my, my wife's got both of those themes i can i can hear all of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. trying, trying to tie her down yeah that's the situation. <laughs> For sure. that's hilarious um well in terms of communication um, all of our strengths, if, if kind of not overused, but used inappropriately, um, can get in the way at times. And so how have you seen communication kind of get in the way, um, for you and how have you worked to, you know, hone it in and turn it in from like just a raw talent to a strength? I think I can always find 12 different ways that everything gets in my way um so uh, just a couple of examples that come to my mind one um one way that i would say this has definitely uh tripped me up in the past is i want to feel the silence and it is common for a communicator that there's not a lot of silence when you're around them that is not ideal in a range of scenarios so if if you are working with someone who um often has a lot of thinking based strength then you need that pause and you need that time to reflect and and i actually try and go into coaching sessions and say um there will be times I, i i i almost contract i will pause i will leave spaces for you to think um at times today so and and that's that's there to show them I'm aware that I do this. Um, and it's also a reminder to me, you don't always need to fill that gap. Likewise, if, you, if you're delivering a session to a group of people, sometimes that moment of silence, something brilliant can come. And if you interrupt it, you're stopping that opportunity. And, and, and probably the, the most obvious way for me is also being a parent. Um, how, how many times, I listened to a brilliant podcast and I can't remember what it was, but they were speaking about a dad who came home from work and whenever he came home from work he would jump in and get on the ground with the children uh with his children and he'd play and he'd be energetic and he'd do all of those things and ultimately it interrupted their play quite a lot um and uh, what you're potentially doing in those situations is you're not giving and and i'll use it in terms of my example my my, my son and daughter freddie and olivia they if I'm jumping in, then they're used to when I'm around having to be entertained and can they actually play when I'm around and can they feel the science and can they explore because they may be just about to do something incredible, whether that's a first few steps or whatever it may be. And me coming in and jumping in, whether that's verbal or non-verbal in my kind of getting their attention, mm-hmm. stop something great potentially happening. Um, so that's, that's the reminder for me. I think the the other one, and I hear this all the time, and I don't know whether it's I'm really sensitive to this point. I hear all over the place people complaining about the lack of communication, uh, particularly in organisations. I hear it again and again and again, and it, it often is a frustration. I am intrigued whether those people have high communication um, or whether there is actually other things at play that they feel frustrated Um I mean, I could I could go through every single theme and, yeah. and give an example of why they might be frustrated if they're not communicated with well. It it the, does to cut you sorry, off though really quick, but also the type of communication, like someone with deliberative versus maximizer or you know positivity, like they're just going to need to be communicated to differently. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely sorry. right. And and. No, 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 you're absolutely spot on. And how is that personalized? And there could be the danger, for example, you put out too much communication. And in the case of someone with deliberative, you've put it out so quickly that you've not actually considered the impact of that communication. And they may be sitting there thinking, 
actually you maybe should have considered this and this before you sent that out to everybody um and so i, I think there's reasons that it can frustrate lots of people and, and as you said there are so many different types of communication communication isn't just because no one has let me know it can be because there's too much of it and the message is getting watered down so that, that definitely is also some well, the reason I say that's a, way, a, a time where it's got in my way is because I know I'm annoyed about it <laughs> and I'm having to um, make sure I don't vent that because it doesn't, it doesn't add any value. If I, if I don't like it, I can ultimately do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. And then that instead of like getting to a place of like just being negative and complaining about it and it's like, you're not, it's not productive. Like, and it's like, oh, right, well, figure out why you're like that. You know, it's like instead of just presenting the problem, like sharing the problem with a solution, you know, or at least a, th a thought towards a solution um, is, is huge in terms of like, I'm, yeah, just being a good employee and having good workplace, you know, health and everything like that. So. And, and I think my, my dominant domain of strengths is relationship building. I'm, it means everything to me, the people that I work with, the people I care about. So ultimately, most of the time, if I see something that's not communicated right, my thought is straight away with that person I have a relationship with and how I can support, develop them mm -hmm. to communicate more effectively in the future. So I, I would tend to lean that way anyway. Totally. Awesome. Those are some, some really great just like insights and in helping people think through like okay how is it getting in my way how can i refine it um because we don't want you to not use it it's one of your you know given talents to to be able to to change the world um and and be successful and so refining it and so as we wrap what, up our what, of course sorry Charles. i've been no, to interrupt you halfway no, through um, there was there was one point that i'd actually written down to write and i thought i think this is a really important point with communication and, mm -hmm. and maybe the place and space to say it i there is an assumption that communicators love to stand up be the middle the center of attention and i think that sometimes people should be try and be slightly aware of that because i know there are times where i really don't want to communicate and i don't want to be center and i don't want to be stood up and noticed and and, and this could easily fall into the, the, how it gets in your way. You put a lot of energy into being a really good communicator. And actually there are times where if you're thrown into a situation, you're not prepared. I might not be able to communicate effectively. And so I've been in situations, particularly strength-based ones, where someone goes, oh, you've got communication, you go for it. Nah, don't, don't do that to me. I, I, I appreciate what you're trying to do and I appreciate you being aware of my thing, but don't make an assumption because yes. actually for me, preparation is important to be able to be an effective communicator. I can be off the cuff in situations, but there are, but I, I just think that I've met a few communicators before who don't actually like being the center and the middle. Totally. Yeah. I think that that's such a good point, especially in terms of like organizations that are strength based. And then we just make these assumptions based on whatever the talent is, but then for communication, like, Oh, well, we'll just have, you know, we'll just have Jamie do it. Cause he talks all the time and just like, <laughs> just throw him up there and he'll do great. And you're like, no, like, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, and that's why I think all the things that look different for different people, it's, it's totally. just worth, making sure you have the conversation uh, i thought this might be ideal for you how do you feel about it mm -hmm. yeah where well, that situation doesn't bother me as much but i also have high adaptability mm. right and so it's like oh uh, we need that to happen like that i'm also stepping in to like that like off the cuff thrown into is like where i'm best because of my my collection of talents like that's taking my adaptability and my communication and harnessing those going forward. And so for me, that's like, if I just did that all day, like <laughs> we'd be doing great. Um, but for other people, that's not going to be the case. Um, and, and so just like using, I think this is just a great picture of like how to use the tool effectively. And it's like, you can't just know that someone has just communication, mm -hmm. but it's like, yeah with that empathy and that developer and that strategic that you have like those are gonna sl 
in ways slow you down on your communication because you're going to be a little more thoughtful. How are people going to feel about this? How is this going to move? Who's the demographic and how are we going to move them forward in development? Um, you want to think through the strategic plan, right? And so mm-hmm. for mine is like belief. Those are always in me. Like I don't need to think about my values. They're just going to come out. Maximizer. Like I already – and, you know, futuristics, my number one, like I'm already thinking about it's, it's there, the vision. Right. And so then I have the adaptability. And so my talents are just in a space of like, I could step into that talking situation and be that front and center person like that. But for and, other and, people, and that is the, per- yeah. And that's the perfect example of why, uh, why it's worth getting to know the person and asking the questions because they are ultimately going to use them very differently and Mm -hmm. you can't pick up someone's set of things and it's something i have a bit of a challenge with as a coach because there are people who coach by assuming that they will know exactly who you are before they've met you because they've seen your report um yeah i think you've got to be careful around that i think that there has to be some investment and there needs to, and that's why questioning is so important for me, because I want them to. I may have some assumptions because it's difficult in life not to. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm going to ask a question that's ultimately going to unpick whether I was on the right or wrong path. Totally, and that's why even even the conversation of how these themes, like for both of us to have communication, and even in this conversation, people are getting to hear and witness how communication shows up differently in two different people because how how we interact with the world is very different um but we both have communication um in our top five and so like it is there um and then even the idea of like how we talk about there it's the communication theme and then within the theme is a ton of different talents that all kind of revolve around the idea of communication. Um, And I think as coaches, you know, if there's any coaches watching that, like when we first are meeting a client, it's like, okay, they have the theme, but we want to be answering, asking questions to help understand, well, what is that talent look like particularly to them? Um, And getting to know even the theme dynamics and how, because everyone's unique. It all shows up differently. We've all had different experiences, grew up in different environments, all, you know, all that stuff. Um, and so it's so important to, you know, it's a good starter to get to, you know, have maybe some more accurate um, assumptions, but we can't have those assumptions that dictate how we coach people. Um, and, you know, that's even for managers too. Like I think a lot of organizations get, um, caught up and like oh, okay like we went through it i know the person's things and so i'm just gonna it's like and there's so much more nuance and that's why it takes a lot more th- it takes thoughtfulness to use the tool well um and so yeah that was a really good conversation that's good stuff um so tips for people who have communication so if you're going to give them you know two or three things to think about um, what would you tell them in terms of moving their communication talents from a talent to a strength? I think, I think there's a couple of things that come to mind, which some of which I've already mentioned. Um, I think one would be, as I've kind of spoke about, think about when this is quite raw, how you might, um, how communication can be overbearing if not considered. And I would just be aware to try and try to build in that awareness piece about the listening um, how long and, and it may be down to as simple as timing how long you were silent um, thinking about uh, the questions that you've actually asked what was the brilliant question that got such a great response from that other person because communicators learn their style their patter they learn what sounds right and, and what suits them and if you've asked that brilliant question, you've got a great response from it, then rem- you will remember it and you will use it again. So just try and refine and be aware of the responses you're getting from people would be, be one thing I would think about. My second one would be look at who are great communicators, who inspires you and who's going to influence the way that you um, communicate to. And I get such a 
I get so much energy from listening to a good communicator that I maybe even consider times like I'm going to an interview, let's listen to a great communicator. I feel inspired when I walk into that room and full of energy. So there might be times where you want a bit of energy um, and they may be good times to lean on those people that you are inspired to listen to. I think the, the third thing that I, I kind of came up with is... And, and, and this may be different for different communicators, Chas, because <laughs> from what we've discussed, we, we know we can work off of the cuff. Can't mm -hmm. um, but as I almost said with those questions, refine them, practice your stories, um, practice the language, practice things that come out. When I coach now, I, I might have a style that I start with that now just feels natural language to me because when you are at the beginning trying things out and testing something and trying some new language, Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes you think, yeah, I tried that. Didn't, it didn't really resonate. I'm not sure it felt right. If you refine like, it. You, I understood it, but did they? Like, yeah, absolutely. You are constantly thinking about, did that land well with the audience? And that can be, I said, I like comedians. So if I'm delivering a bit of training and I make, I say something that I think might be, I don't know, slightly witty, slightly funny. If, if I get half a smile from one person out of 20, I'm not using that again. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Not, I tried it. That was terrible. Don't go there again. But, but likewise, you might have an anecdote or something that you tell that just resonates well with people. And you think, ah, that was good. That worked. That kind of fitted. I can see where that slips in. And it just becomes, particularly if you ever get environments where you get to repeat things, um, you can just pull it up from inside you don't need to have it written down you just that kind of energy you got last time when you communicated mm -hmm. it will bring it back to the forefront i mean i don't know if you find the same Chaz. do you have flow do you have certain environments yeah. where you think i just know what's going to come out of my mouth and it's like there's there's just like for me there's these core ideas that everything kind of ends up flowing back to and it's like I end up telling the same things over and over again. Like it's, it's a <laughs> kind of broken record. Um, and so like certain antidotes that like, it's like I have this cake story that works for so many things because it, and so I use it in all kinds of areas. And I'm like, this is how this antidote works for this situation or for this. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's like, so I have it and I tell it a lot. Um, Ch Chaz, I, I'm really intrigued from a p perspective because this I, I've led a few podcasts before mm -hmm. from someone ad having a content like this where there's going to be multiple episodes. Do you are you aware of when you use certain things over and over, or, or is there because I listen to some I love podcasts and I listen to some brilliant people who I sometimes hear tell the same stories to different guests mm -hmm. or the same thing, and I always always think. I don't know whether that would get in my head. <laughs> yeah. The next time I'm like, I said that last time, don't repeat it. I've, I'm intrigued. Uh, I think I do at times, like, it's like don't want to over communicate something or whatever, but I think I've just grown more and more comfortable. It's like, yeah, okay. it just takes so many times to hear something for it to, to click for people. Yeah, yeah um, that is a great point. That's a really that, great point. I'm just like, oh, whatever. Like, if you've heard, you know, I know students that I've worked with um, for many years, like if, if they're with me, they're like, oh, the cake, the cake story again. You know, like I've uh, heard that one. <laughs> and, and, but it's, it's not. Yeah. It's, like it's, it's like free advertising, isn't it? It's like <laughs> if I just suddenly go and my pair of glasses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the more times you suddenly drop it in, the more effect it has. Yeah. Okay. Totally. Yeah. That's um, a good, point. good point. So for sure. Um, cool. Well, Jamie, thanks so much for uh, joining me. It's been a pleasure getting to, to chat and everything. And so um, if you're listening and in and or watching on YouTube and you're in the UK, reach out to Jamie, the underscore strength underscore coach on Instagram. Hit him up. If you're looking to um, implement strengths or look for coaching, um, Jamie is your guy. Go over and, and find him on Instagram and DM him. Do you have uh, the sore 
the sore um, dot com is that a, a place for yeah people I've been using a few a few different sites I would actually probably say the best place is to go to either Instagram Facebook or LinkedIn uh, mm -hmm. look for one of those three and they kind of direct you all back to each other um, yeah. I've got to map them together that way but uh, but likewise Chaz look, I've got uh, one huge compliment for you to ask me in the first place so I'm, I'm really grateful for that um and two i'm seeing the kind of beginning of what you're releasing and, and it's inspiring to look at and for me visually it communicates really well to an audience too and uh I'm, I'm excited to continue watching and seeing what else you uh what you else you are sharing with the community too awesome thanks man i really appreciate that it's been fun getting started and getting the ball rolling so um yeah, and if you have any, if you want to grow in your organizational health or implementing strengths in your organization and you're in the United States, head over to joytal.com, J O Y T A L.com. And I'd love to um, get connected and figure out some ways that I can help you with that. So, um, hey, I think with that, that's all we got. Have a great day and um, a joyful rest of your week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.